Okay, <laughs> welcome, hello. <laughs> Uh, before we get started, I'd just like to make an acknowledgement of the Conservation Institute and its people acknowledge Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people as the traditional custodians of Australia and pay respect to elders past, present and emerging um, and also uh, who are watching this webinar today. We recognise the continued connection to land, water and communities and we pay our respect to the wisdom that they bring into our practice. So thank you. Uh, today we're going to be talking about family group conference and before we get into some question and answers and, and how it's been going so far because we have many people that are in our uh, membership and I know that you know this is something that's being rolled out um, across Australia and particularly in New South Wales there's been a really big uptake into the implementation throughout uh, child protection services and also um, foster care agencies and also we're now seeing it go into various other um, helping professions as well and and social services so um, it's really exciting because the Mediation Institute who have the knowledge and skills within the area of mediation have taken on board training um, alongside with me uh, throughout Australia. And um, it's such, for me, I'm very passionate about, about family group conferencing because I've been working in family work in the child protection field um, for Oh, over 10 years now and um, family group conferencing is it is a way that families and extended families have um, are respected and become to have a right to be involved in making decisions about their children and this is really important it's very empowering um, to give those some of those decision making processes back to family and it acknowledges that that will uh, not only give better outcomes, but also, you know, that's based upon the, the theory behind family group conferencing that families do know what's going on in their families and um, they, they have, as an extended family, ideas of how they can keep their children safe and um, also what's really needed for the children and um, also parents and extended family. So family group conferencing is a very important component to the work that we do in family work in all social services but particularly within child protection and, and that's the main area where it has been used. Um, I keep saying in other areas because although it was originally designed for child protection um, and it originated in New Zealand in 1989 what we're seeing is that it's really expanding into other areas. So when we think about the model of family group conferencing, what it does do is it brings um, not only extended family members together, but it also any, also children. So it also gives children and young people uh, a voice within what's going on for them and the decisions that are going to be made. It gives disempowered parents in, um, within a system of processes, it gives them some empowerment to also contribute to those decisions, even if there is particular decisions that can't be made. So it really brings people together. Um, and, and what I also see that it, it's doing is bringing caseworkers, case managers, child protective services, um, you know, the, the, the workers that are working on the ground in the field, it brings them together with family um, and other significant services within those families' lives. And it really starts to bring a bridge together and everybody to start working together on an agreed plan of how children can be safe and how families can be supported. So the work that's happening and, and the way it's being inbuilt within Child Protective Services now um, has a very, very important role to children's lives. <laughs> I mean, that's really what it's about. Um, and, you know, uh, the, the joy in, in a really difficult, challenging time for families that I see that this can bring, even simple things like that come into a plan of families that maybe have not had connection or support because of all the challenges that have gone on, that all of a sudden they're having things like family barbecues. And, um, you know, that seems like a well, a bit of a magic wand, but it's really not. It's about for, for at some point 
um, families have been engaged and they've been um, able to come together and empowered enough to really make some good decisions for themselves and their families. And this is where children win in this situation because when we bring families to work together, that's when children really get the joy of connection with their families. So this is a really important aspect. So as you can see, I'm really passionate about what family group conferencing can bring and the connection that it can bring to services and families and the positive outcomes that it can have to keep children safe. So um, currently there's a lot of work going on within um, the child, within the family group conferencing area. There's just been a new tender that some, some members and people that have just finished our course have tended for. So the tender is something that can happen uh, that you register on the Tenders New South Wales website. So you can be alerted when the next tender comes out. It has just finished and closed. And the tender's finished working. So everybody will be announced soon who is on that tender. So it's something that we have to commit to the roles and responsibilities in being in there and to stay in that tender panel. Um, so a pa it's a panel of providers that FACS goes to to give the referrals to in order for us to facilitate the family group conferences. Um, and this is something that if you have been trained, you do have some experience in working with people, um, families in the, in the social services area, or you have some qualifications in that area, um, and you've done the family group conferencing training, you're a member of the Mediation Institute is also a very helpful thing to show that you're continuing to, to learn and be part of an environment where you can grow and develop in your skills. Um, then, you know, that's all the information and things that you would put on the panel. So some people have said, oh, what's a, what's a panel? What's a tender for me? But um, it's, it's fairly simple process actually. It's more like think of when we write a job application. So that's really what the, the tender process is. And it's usually, um, of course, this can always change, but it's what I've seen is usually about twice a year um, that New South Wales put out these tenders and that we can re-tender for that application. Once we're on the panel, I think it's now three years that they keep us on the panel. I, I can't think of for the memory, but they've just changed it. And I think it's three years. Is that right, Joanne? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was a three year. Yeah. yeah. So once you're on it, then you've got it for three years. You don't have to keep reapplying every time they put it out. And, and that will be the amount of time that it is will be based on the demand. And what I'm seeing is in particular areas, there's more demand. So um, around sort of New England area, around Sydney and south of Sydney, like Tamworth regions, um, the, uh, what do we call it, the central coast, those areas seem to have a really high demand for facilitators. Um, I live in the sort of Tweed Byron regions. There doesn't seem to be quite as high demand or they have people, like they have more people that are directly in those towns. I actually live on the Gold Coast. So I've been doing a lot of um, family group conferences for the panel a lot throughout Sydney and um, Tamworth and Central Coast where they actually really need a lot more facilitators. So if you are living in those areas, uh, I've definitely seen, um, of course, there's no guarantee with anything. Don't want to promise those things, but definitely that's where I've seen a lot, a lot of um, gap of facilitators. Um, so, I mean, that's been, that's been really a lot of work that comes through. I've been traveling a lot the last few months, but before that there was just an abundance of referrals that, you know, I could, there was even points where I had to say, I'm sorry, I can't take any more on because I can't do it justice, The actually the facilitation and the preparation stage, because we need to make sure that we do have the time to do that facilitation and the preparation for that. It's more the preparation for facilitation because the preparation is the key. So the connecting with families before. So we really need that time. And also, if we've got 10 to do in a month, um, then we're not really going to have the time even. You know, we need to think about when can we facilitate this conference because we have a four-week time frame. Some people need it done within two weeks based on maybe a court appearance that's going to happen um, or there's something specific like it's, a, it's an emergency and a crisis right now and we need to find some... Um, housing and for these children 
some placement for the children. Uh, so there's definitely a lot that I'm seeing still coming through. Um, what I'm also getting, and I haven't had the time to actually um, be able to fulfill some of them, but there's definitely foster care agencies that are making contact asking for that. So the other thing in doing this training, it's not just that you, I mean, you don't have to work on the panel. You can actually work privately. What you need to do is just like you would with any business, like the panel obviously give you the referrals. And, and if you're very free, you can send a message to those um, coordinators for that panel and say, hey, look, I'm really free this month. If you do have any, I'm able to do them. Or let them know, hey, I'm going away for the next two months. I can't do any. But, you know, also think about this. If you're not getting the referrals or you don't want to work on the facts panel, but you still want to do family group conferencing, then treat it like any business that you would and go out and find the work. So you have to advertise and market yourself. <laughs> so, you know, mm -hmm. get. I know that Joanne's probably got, I know you've got information on how to make mediator kits, for example, and um, put those things together in the FDR course. So, you know, there's some of the things maybe that we can look at incorporating as well into the Family Group Conferencing course because I think it's important that you go out and, you know, you can email out, you can go to your local foster care agencies and let them know, hey, I'm here and I'm a trained Family Group Conference facilitator and I'm able to start facilitating if you have any need for that. You know, if you're new to it and you haven't done any yet, it can be that you can also offer, you know, a lower rate to get a few... I guess, conferences un under your belt. If it's something that you're new to, on offer it to community services um, organisations. But definitely the out-of-home care services are the ones that are contacting me in relation to this. But you can, you can contact disability services, you know, um, when they're working with families, even aged care services, and, and you can do up a kit and show them that this is the process. You could even go and talk to organisations and say, this is the process, you know, this is what I offer and this is my fee and this is how it could benefit the clients that you're working with. So really think of it as when you do this training, you actually, be, you actually independently really own your own business in a way. So really go out there and market yourself in your local area if you're wanting more more work and you'll start to become known and people will start to think you know when they understand the benefits because there's still many people out there that don't know what family group conferencing are that are working in disability age services out of home care services go and have a meeting with the managers of out of home care services you know really um really market your business i guess if you're looking for other work until you get on the tender because for people that do the training now that's like a great thing that they can do and then when they while they're waiting for the next tender to come out and then they can show that they've actually already done that in the local area some some private um, family group conferencing as well yeah and look we've been working with uh, a number of members with a practice development mastermind throughout the year and there's quite a few resources available um, to members through through that group um, our next meetings on the 3rd of December um, for the for that mastermind and it's very much around what you've been talking about Eve, of you know for developing a professional practice um, and some of the strategies around that um, what that's a find. great webinar for people to go on then because, you know, when they do the family group conference training, like for the, for the low cost that it is, I mean, you're really getting like, a, yeah. you're getting your own business and yeah. when you go onto the panel, you're actually getting the work given to you. So it's, it's, a, it's a massive opportunity that doesn't really exist anywhere else. But if you don't get onto the panel and you do do the training, then go and start, um, Go and start doing it privately, like I said, for reduced cost, build up business further. Yeah. Um, you know, even co-facilitate with somebody in your area. You could offer to help somebody that's doing family group conferencing already to build up your skills with that. Obviously, you know, if you don't have the skills, you don't want to be doing family group conferences because it is very vulnerable people. But you can also look at... Um, you can also look at non-child protection cases. You can offer that to um, family support services 
um, in facilitating processes for their families, like as even a work experience thing, like you don't even have to charge for that if you want to get um, experimenting with, um, I guess, the process that's not kind of the highest end risk child protection cases. So if it's really about starting to work and involve families, if you don't have that experience, then that's definitely another way that you could start to implement it and do it with their sort of family support worker in conjunction with them and, and start to, you know, bring families around the table and create some plans together with other services. So that's what I would, I would recommend if you're feeling like, hey, I don't have all the experience. Some people do the training and they maybe they feel like, well, I don't know how to go straight into a family group conference, then do it with, a lower risk family, mm. a family that need to come together to make some plans um, and you can use our process for it. Yeah, and, and things like NDIS where, where the challenges aren't so much around the family as around the, you know, the, the, the child or the vulnerable young adult or whatever. And um, yeah, the, the NDIS agencies are very, very visible um, and in your local area. Yes. And um, yeah, and they've got a really hard job caught up between the, you know, the regulations that they've got and the expectations of families. And yeah, um, it's, it's, I think it's a brilliant um, way yeah. for NDIS. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of scope to look at it going into that and it being. Uh, oh. oh, frozen there for a moment. Oh, being yeah. Sorry, you froze up there just for a moment, Eve. Oh, hello? Yeah, yeah, you're back again now. Yeah, back. I agree. I think it really could be inbuilt as a service to NDIS. I think yeah. it would be wonderful. There's so much scope for family group conferencing, isn't there? Yeah, the biggest challenge is that people just don't know about it. And, and that's really where as practitioners, um, I'm a practitioner now, Jade. I did this course up in Brisbane. <laughs> Um, um, that yeah, that we need to get out and talk to people about this process because pretty much anyone I talk to um, hasn't really heard of it. Right. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, right. I mean, I think if the challenge is that um, services aren't aware of the family group conference process or the availability of um, facilitators, then that's a definite barrier. Yeah. Um, I I know that I've sent out. Um, maybe 50 emails and had people say thanks for letting us know what it's about and that's it and there hasn't been anything else and I've just had some um, some little kits made up thanks to Canva yeah. <laughs> with some um, great, isn't it? <laughs> some classes yeah um so i will I think the best way forward is to start hitting um hitting the streets and actually going and introducing myself to people because I think there's, you know, one thing when you, you know, making a phone call or sending an email and another thing when people get to sit across from you and um, and actually meet you and know what you're about and what the process is about. So Absolutely. And, you know, taking on Eve's um, thing of, you know, offering an introductory price, you, you, you might yeah. offer them um, some vouchers or something and say, you know, look, this is my normal fee, but if you've got families that are experiencing hardship, mm. Um, mm. I'm willing to take on a, a, you know, a limited number of cases. <laughs> um, <laughs> but then you start to get a name for yourself exactly in the area and people start to recommend and if they have a good experience, then of course, it's like any business, you're going to get repeat customers, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, it's a good idea. It's a great idea. Yeah. And I think that's what you do with the FDR. That's the recommendations you have for FDR as well, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. But you, you're quite right. Emails are, um, and just gen marketing in general, um, the, the going rate is that you, you need to have about 15 contacts with people um, before they're actually ready to buy. So, um, you know, yeah. if, if you're lucky and you contact them at the moment where they're desperately looking for a solution and you're, the, you're it, then that's, that's fine. But um, other than that, if they don't know about you, um, then mm -hmm. yeah, so, so putting together some, some basic information about the process that you can send out to them as a little, little newsletter yeah. update thing. 
go and talk at team yeah. like team meetings all community yeah. organizations have team meetings you know find out when it is be a be a guest there yeah um, yeah that's the strategy we use with indirect support um the not-for-profit that we um run for family dispute resolution um yeah just just contact them um they'd like to come out and talk to your team um and they'll they'll organize that um just you know it's only you know, usually five minutes you don't need to do a big presentation or anything like that you just say this is what it is this is the type of clients we help have you got any questions yeah yeah that yeah right yeah, that, I've found that really helpful. Um, and still, yeah, like got people from five, four, four years ago that just sort of keep sending clients because, um, <laughs> you know, they know. Love good that. Yeah, yeah. So look, it, it's something that we've we've thought about with Interact support of whether we should introduce um, FGC as one of the services. And it might be something we we're going to do a another review of you know where we're at and that at the end of the year um because it would certainly fit within our our mission of preventing family violence and helping families to communicate yeah. and organize so um we'll hold, hold it yeah, happy to do that. Oh, sorry. I started yeah. strong on um promoting village kids and getting out there and then um, the the program I've been developing a national program for uh, prevention of violence against women and children, and then in the last month that's just blown up and totally taken my um, my focus away from this. But now I can get back to it, which will be good. Yeah. Oh, excellent. Um, yeah, and that, and that's a problem, isn't it? Focus. <laughs> it's just not enough time yeah. to do everything that you'd like no. to. No, not done. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Good. Okay. Well, that was great. Thank you. We've got the training in Sydney in um, oh, a, couple, uh, a bit over a week. Um, Fifth and sixth, uh, I think, of December. Sixth, yeah, Thursday and Friday. Um, so I will share this out with um, those that have been thinking about coming. There's still um, time. So what's what's your advice for anyone that's sort of wanting to come to the workshop without much time on the pre-work? I think that doesn't matter at all. Um, I think uh, come because we have two days of really hands-on. You really get a good understanding of what the conferencing is all about and we do lots of role plays and then you can go back and read in depth all the online material. So the online material is really there to support you like um, on, with extra information. But really, if you come along to the two days, then you really get a good grasp of what conferencing is all about. So you don't particularly need to be prepared, <laughs> even though I shouldn't say that. Yeah, no, but it's, um, it's... You know, you can just come along and that's... Would you say that too, Jed? You've done the, the workshop and the training, but, you know, you I, could... I, I was prepared. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can definitely, it's really well supported workshop. So you can definitely come along without having had um, a lot of opportunity to do that beforehand. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. So I hope to see many more of you there. And next year, I think we'll definitely do some strong road shows. And I think the, the trainings will be even more packed at iSense. Yeah.